Thank you to EA for sponsoring this video. So if you haven't heard the news already, I am playing Kenzie in the upcoming game, Immortals of Avium. So um, I figured who better to show you all the different kinds of magic in Avium. EA invited me to their headquarters to get an extensive hands-on preview of the gameplay. And I, I mean extensive, like, like three hours. Now EA paid my travel fees and hosted me for this event in exchange for uploading a video. So I think legally I am supposed to say it is sponsored. But other than that, I was not paid to make this video or to give you any particular opinion. So while, yes, I am blatantly biased because I'm in it, I'm going to be totally, completely honest about my experience playing this game. Okay, okay, okay. If you know me, you know I love my magic. And Immortals of Avium is a high-energy, single-player, first-person magic shooter with a rich, compelling story that I know a bit more about than I'm allowed to say. <laughs> so immediately, I was in. My goal with this video is to explain and demonstrate the three different types of magic you can use in Immortals of Avium, at least in the beginning from my experience playing the opening of the game, and give you my thoughts on it all without spoiling any story stuff. I will surface level introduce some key characters, and you might see some early boss fights and stuff, but other than that, that's really it. And all of the footage I am showing in this video is my own personal gameplay, so I apologize in advance if it is a bit haphazard. <laughs> I am not an FPS pro. I don't want to spend too long getting into all the nitty gritty, so here are some screenshots of the controls on an Xbox controller and on mouse and keyboard, so you can pause those and check it out if you're trying to study the controls before the game comes out. And if you're looking for more details on all the techie stuff, I will leave all those details in the description down below. And to go ahead and ruin the suspense, no, my character Kenzie is not in this video at all, but uh, We'll get there another day. Now, on to the magic! There are three kinds of magic that we know of. I like to think of them as schools of magic, and the vast majority of battle mages only utilize one the whole time. They only ever use one. But you, as Jack, are a triarch, Magnus, meaning you harness all three, blue, red, and green. Each kind of magic has different spells that can be channeled in various ways, such as sigils, fancy metal wrist attachments that are basically like pretty wand bracelets, totems, various neato magic artifacts that you can harness to release control spells, furies, powerful magic that you must release from within, expending a good amount of mana. And augments, little extra spells that change how you move and interact with the world, little bonus Jonas spells. Now let's break down each color and the sigils, totems, furies, and augments you get in the beginning of the game. Blue magic, force magic, embodies the physical manipulation of matter. The first blue sigil strike is a shrike bolt which acts like a semi-automatic gun, long range and precise. I'm uh, not great at this one, but it's fine, it's fine, I I'll get better. The first blue totem is Lash. Whoa, I, I can feel it, coiling. What is that? It's a Lash. You can use it to pull enemies towards you. This is so freaking satisfying. I love just yanking enemies toward me and just boom. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> the first blue fury is Shatter, where you launch enemies in the air with rocky spikes from the ground. And the first blue augment you get is Shield. Wow, I feel invincible. Take it easy, Conscript. You're still vincible. Pretty self-explanatory. You just summon a runic shield that you can still fire through. So you throw it up and then just pew! Keep going, it's fun. Another blue augment was Hover, this floaty levitation magic that you can do just by triple jumping. Red magic, chaos magic, embodies entropy and violence. Ugh. It, it feels angry. The first red sigil strike is breach fire, basically your shotgun with short range, high damage, large spread. I usually like to keep my distance in games and go for as, as long range a thing as I can, but for some reason in this one, the freaking red chaos magic breach fire and frag fire is just, it feels so good and so satisfying. And so I actually like getting up in the enemy's faces and just, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> the first red totem is disrupt, a stunning beam that disorients enemies. The first red fury is Blast Wave, a massive AOE kaboom! 
And as far as augments, I don't remember learning any red augment spells, but doesn't mean they don't exist. Green magic, life magic, embodies growth, death, and transition. Ouch! Guessing this spell emphasizes the death part. Hmm. There is a war to win. The first green sigil strike is Storm Shards, your automatic machine gun with rapid fire homing shots. I love using this one when I'm not entirely sure where the enemy has gone because some of them really just be zip zap zopping all over the place. Or when I'm just in panic mode and don't trust myself to aim. <laughs> First green totem, limpets. A bottle of goop that slows objects and enemies. The green fury was torrent. Three ranged seeking magical projectiles. I did I didn't actually end up blasting this one off, but it's it exists. <laughs> I remember them teaching me it and I just never used it. And two green augment spells I learned were blink and animate. Blink is basically a dodge where you bamf five feet in either direction. And animate? If you find a glowing green sigil on certain objects, you can cast animate to contort their position to be more useful to you. Moving massive sculptures like this to create a bridge is just so beautiful and satisfying. And last but not least, I eventually learned a Dominion spell. An ultimate spell that charges up in battle to release all three types of magic at once. This is Immolate, a devastating beam that raises groups of enemies and bosses alike. So there you have it, everything we know so far about the magic of Avium. I had such a blast playing this preview that after I had finished the demo and like downloaded my footage and whatever, we had extra time so I just started over on a higher difficulty and started playing on mouse and keyboard just for fun because I just I couldn't stop thinking about it I could have gone and like socialized eaten food got a drink whatever gone back to the hotel early played Zelda no I would just I wanted to use as much of my time that I had there as I could to keep playing this game I am counting down the days until I can hold this game in my hand it's 50, by the way. 50 days until July 20th, when the game releases for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S and X, and PC. I know, I know if you have a previous gen console, I feel your pain, but this game is just way too powerful for previous gen. It needs these next gen consoles because this game is insane. There's so much going on. It is so beautiful. It's being run on Unreal Engine 5 and it's just, it's, it's too powerful for previous gen. I fully understand after playing why they couldn't make that an option. They just they just couldn't. They they could have made sacrifices and made like a more dull game, I guess, and, and let it happen on previous gen, but they were not gonna make any compromises and wanted to make the best game they possibly could, and I really feel like they did that. So go ahead and pre-order, links are in the description below, and get ready to summon your power, stop the Everwar, save the realms, and meet Kenzie. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Expect more on Immortals of Avium coming over on my main channel at a later date, and I'll see you later. Bye!